I'm delighted now to introduce Max Maservi, Head of Sustainable Investment Americas, a global asset management company of global asset management company, Mercer. Mm -hmm. At Mercer, Max provides advice on sustainable investment strategies, climate change and impact investment approaches throughout investment processes. Max, you've also been a key figure in reports on the increasing number of institutional investors' impactful allocations to African infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And we just looked at consumers and finance, the conversation we had with Andre. Another group that we cannot forget, and this has been fantastic working with and partnering with Mercer, is the role that institutional actors like asset managers and pension funds can play. In the US alone, pension funds are estimated to have more than $35 trillion under management. So what can and should institutional actors do to help in the race to zero? What tools are available to them? Let's talk a little bit more about this. Sure, Shetta. And just to clarify, yeah, we are an institutional investment consultant at Mercer. And so um, we work with some of these large institutional investors to help them think about uh, you know, aligning different objectives that they may have. Most, of course, are, are most focused on you know, earning uh, an appropriate return for whomever they're investing on behalf of, whether it's pension fund members or an insurance company, um, while mitigating risks along the way. And uh, so when you think about really challenging emerging risks of climate change where we're seeing the effects already today. We know that there will need to be some sort of energy transition towards a lower carbon economy um, that's going to drive a lot of shifts in the way that, that uh, stock markets move and the way that assets are priced. You know, it really gets to be a challenging question of how can you invest for, you know, earning an appropriate return for your, your, your members or your, your beneficiaries um, to also, you know, again, mitigating the risks, those risks. So when you think about you know, the race to net zero, you think about how can institutional actors play a role in that? Well, there's a few different things. I mean, first of all, what we advise our clients um, is to start set it by setting a baseline. If you want to understand where your carbon emissions are today, where are you invested today? We have tools and capabilities to essentially kind of look under, un, at the, from the bottom up in an investment portfolio and see exactly where an investor is, is allocated, where are they invested in, whether it's, uh, you know, equities out of Europe, um, you know, you know, stocks and bonds out of Europe, or um, or in yeah more emerging market regions, and from that we can we can kind of total up those carbon emissions and provide a, a baseline carbon footprint assessment for our clients. From there, when you think about transitioning towards a low carbon economy, you want to think about creating a glide path towards reducing those emissions over time, while also of course earning your appropriate risk, you know return objectives. Um, as you go. So it makes sense for them to mm -hmm. set these science-based targets, right? In which to, which to um, compare against. That's, that's critical. And you're saying yes. you support that. Yes, well, well absolutely. We, you know, it's, it's important to understand the, the external standard setters who help define when a company makes a commitment to get to net zero or, or reduce its carbon emissions, is that in line with emerging climate science, with what the IPCC um, has said in its manifold reports about where we need to go as a society? Is the company in line with that? alignment with that trajectory of emissions or are they misaligned with it? If they're misaligned as an investor, you probably want to start having conversations with that company if you're invested in them to talk about, well, you know, what's your strategy for mitigating sure. those emissions? Sure. So, I mean, this is fantastic that this is available to companies. Why aren't we seeing more action? Is that, is that fair to say? Or are we just not hearing about the action? Mm -hmm. What is it? It's a good question. I mean, there, there are many, many big commitments that many investors are make, have made and are making. Um, of course, you know, the Glasgow uh, you know, Financial Alliance for Net Zero, which was launched uh, at Glasgow last year in COP26, you know, that was around $130 trillion of, of assets represented in that, that commitment group. And I think it's, it's grown since then. Um, and I think that what we're, what we're seeing, though, is that you know, we at Mercer, you know, to be clear, we are fiduciaries to our clients. We meet our clients where they are on their sustainability journeys. And what that means is that some will want to be more uh, you know, kind of progressive in these areas or more, let's say, advanced and, and pushing ahead and, and really thinking about climate change and how it wants to integrate into their strategy. And then others, you know, are, are uh, you know, more comfortable just starting with a kind of, kind of uh, more basic assessment of where they are today, um, where they're allocated. They want to learn more about ESG, environmental, social, and corporate governance investment topics, and how that might fit within their overall portfolio. So, you know, we work with investors across the spectrum um, and we help them along their journey. We have really sophisticated tools that, and capabilities to help those that are pushing forward. Um, and we also have those and lots of you know, expertise built over 20 years almost of um, our sustainable investment practice that you know, can really help you know, investors of all spectrums. So it's, it's really quite a, a mix that we work with. 
And you're really well positioned to help these companies meet their targets internally and then also to be able to communicate what they're doing. And mm -hmm. part of that is being partnered with us and joining the We Don't Have Time platform, supporting your portfolio companies to be part of communicating their action as well because we're in an area, era where trans uh, transparency is needed. Mm -hmm. We need to be able to share mm -hmm. the, the actions that are being taken so that others can also follow suit, make this the standard, make this the norm. So is, is transparency coming along? What do you think? What, what can mm -hmm. we do to improve mm -hmm. that, communicate more? Absolutely, and I, it's, it's, it's a really interesting topic because if you are taking all these actions, if you're an institution, um, but you're not actually informing your stakeholders about what you're doing. Well, I mean, you know, it's not that it's not happening, of course, but it's just that your key people you're responsible to, your investors, your, your stakeholders, your, again, members of your pension plan, might not be aware of the actions you've taken. Um, you know, and, that's, and that, that is really a key piece of this increasing move towards transparency amongst, you know, the whole corporate sector, amongst investors as well, who might be responding to um, the United Nations Principles for Responsible Investment, kind of the largest investment collective um, around the world, you know, and they report all this information about what they're doing, their processes, um, you know, and that's really an important source of understanding where, what, what are leading practices these days and what are others doing. So I think that, that you know, that's a key piece of it. And then, of course, in, institutions themselves issuing, say, sustainability reports or ESG reports um, really is an essential piece. You know, and I think that one, one you know, aspect I would also highlight that we, we run into, and this gets back to your, your, your prior question, is that, you know, why are we not seeing more action? Well, you know, it's, it's, these are a lot really tricky issues. And when we come down to it at Mercer, we want to help our clients move along. And when it comes to in climate change, you often hear people say, well, you know, it's a question of beliefs. Do you believe or not believe in climate change and that it's occurring? And for institutional investors, I think what's really different is that the question of beliefs is not as important as actually what are markets doing? What are, what are they pricing in at any given time? So do you believe that the stock markets are pricing in climate change to some extent, that they're pricing in those impacts to, uh, you know, more carbon intense securities or not. Um, it gets to a question of if you're, again, investing on behalf of other people, there is a sense in which you have to be, understand what are the climate impacts that could be occurring today in the stock market that are reflected in prices, and therefore how are you positioning your portfolio to address those risks, uh, to mitigate those risks, and then to also think about capturing returns along the way as we decarbonize. So again, this question is less of beliefs, really more about you know, what's being priced in and how can you react in a strategic way. Well, thank you for explaining that so clearly. That's, it, that's the whole reason we need to have these types of platforms made available to companies that are really leading the sector in transitioning and supporting, especially in the role of, that Mercer is playing in supporting uh, those portfolio companies in, in communicating, becoming more transparent, and everything that you shared with this audience. Thank you, and you're going to continue to do this because we are, we are on a journey to COP27 now. We are kind of at the teaser event, which is Climate Week New York City. So what are we hoping ultimately to come out of COP27? I know that Mercer is sending a delegation to Sharm el-Sheikh, Egypt. What are you hoping will come out of this? And what do you hope to see as we move forward into 2023? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm really excited, the fact that, that Mercer is sending a delegation um, in partnership with our, our parent company, Marsh McLennan Companies uh, Corporation, and um, uh, Oliver Wyman, uh, Marsh, and Guy Carpenter to uh, Sharm el-Sheikh uh, in Egypt, which is it's really exciting because I think that what, what is important is that, of course, this COP is taking place in Africa, which has symbolic value, but it also has significant you know, value in and of itself and the fact that it's drawing attention to the fact that there are regions of the world which need productive investment to um, you know, help them develop in a sustainable way um, to address climate change to mitigate the risks um, and you know, really to think about transitioning their own you know, economies towards, towards more sustainable futures. So what I'm hopeful that we'll come out of and where I think that Mercer's agenda really lies is in trying to educate institutional investors around the opportunities to have productive investments to drive uh, sustainable development in emerging market regions. Um, we've done, as you mentioned earlier, uh, a few different reports on African infrastructure investment um, and also in Latin America and the Caribbean, and really excited to draw on those lessons and work with partners to think about how we can build these productive strategic investments um, in a way that really facilitates you know, earning returns while also you know, helping to impact people's lives in a very positive uh, way. And, mitigate climate change along the way.
Well, we're really looking forward to seeing what comes out of the delegation and, and the uh, conversations at COP27 that are so critical. We are in this final leg of the race. Are we going to win it or not? So, <laughs> yes. big question. That's the big question, right? Well,